From the time I was super little, I only ever wanted one of each thing, just exactly what I needed. One Barbie, one pony, one popple. Raise your hands if any of you millennials remember what a popple is. Uh, one stuffed animal cat and a very limited wardrobe. I remember I had this like little, like, God, it was so 90s. It was like biker shorts that were like pink and purple and blue and then coordinating flower tops. And then I could mix and match all the set. And I was like, oh, this is great. This is all I need. Why I came like this, I have no idea. Um, I remember decluttering though, like as six, seven, eight years old, like, oh, there's too many toys. You know, my dad had four sisters and he was the first one to have kids. So there was never a shortage of nice gifts in the house, but from a very young age, for whatever reason, it always stressed me out to have too much stuff and it just overwhelmed me. I'm like, why do I need three Barbies when I can only really hold one in my hand at a time or whatever? It just never made sense to me to, to have a plethora of things. And most of my childhood was like that. I would play with my toys a little bit, but I grew up in Canada. So a lot of my time was spent hanging out in the woods and going on bike rides and exploring nature. And that's always what made me happiest, not having the new latest and greatest whatever toy. And that carried on pretty much through most of my childhood. And then when I was 14, we moved from Canada back to the States and I got my first taste of a real declutter. We had a garage sale, we had a big, you know, normal suburban house and it, but we were moving. So we had to get a lot, rid of a lot of things. And we had this big garage sale. And I remember my sister was a little bit salty. She didn't want to move and poor thing. She was in the middle of high school. Um, and you know, didn't want to necessarily let go of some favorite things. But for me, I was like, so stoked on it. I got way into the sale and just felt so excited to have a fresh start and let go of all these things. And I remember I had just like one little suitcase with a tiny little wardrobe in it and a few, you know, knickknack kids type things you have when you're a kid. And I was stoked on it and it felt so free, so light and just totally in alignment. If you can know what it feels to be like in alignment when you're 14 years old. Um, but yeah, I loved it. And then in high school, after my first two years of high school, so when I was 16, I actually left home early to train with a synchro club in San Jose for synchronized swimming with the goal of making the US team and then the Olympic team after that. And so I only took a little bit with me. I was focused on training and going to school and really nothing else. And because I was just living by myself, I really only took the few things that I need. And then that carried on through college as well. You know, college, you're living in dorms or, you know, cluttered roommates situation, tiny housing. So you can't really have a lot of things. And I was always just focused on training and going to school and really, you know, you don't have money when you're in college and high school anyway. So I was never too into shopping. And then I got my first job in Vegas and things changed. I was in the entertainment business. I was doing a Cirque du Soleil style show. And so there were a lot of PR events and parties and wine and dine and fancy dinners and club events. And I had my first apartment and it was my first job. So I fell into that keeping up with the Joneses trap and it's interesting how, you know, no one tells you it, but it's just this like pernicious thing that seeps into our awareness uh, in Western cultures that you just need to start. This is what you do when you have an adult. And I had my apartment. And so I was like, oh, well, I need a fancy couch. And I bought this, you know, my dad helped me. It was my first job, but I bought this like really just stupid, like it looked pretty, but it was one of those like z gallery like not functional couches with like a wood frame and cushions that always slid off and like it was like something you should look at but not lounge on and then a glass coffee table which was always like i felt like on the verge of breaking because there were all these little pieces to it and then a big fake plant and then my wardrobe absolutely exploded because it turns out when you go from 90 miles an hour of training full-time and going to school full-time and then having a pretty fairly easy schedule with two days off and money for the first time, boredom sets in, or at least it did for me. And Vegas is kind of a rough city to live in in that there's not, you know, people think of the strip, oh, it's so exciting. Well, like that gets old after a month. And then it's kind of just like strip malls and suburbia and cookie cutter homes. 
So I started shopping a lot to kind of fill the void. And with all these like special events I was going into, I had this, it just snuck up on me, this feeling of like, it's never enough. You have to have a prettier dress, another pair of shoes, a new handbag and keep decorating the home. And now, well, now I need this kind of dish set. And oh, now I need this kind of entertainment thing or this kind of fake plant here to you know just keep decorating or impressing people that don't actually even care. And it just kept accumulating, accumulating, especially the wardrobe, but the rent was cheap back then. We all had big walk-in closets. So I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items. And I remember waking up some mornings and looking at all this stuff and like panicking and feeling this incredible feeling of oppression. Like, why do I have all this? I don't need all this. I don't want all this. This is someone else's life. But then you, you know, you can't deal with those feelings. So I just brush them away and then go to the mall again. And then I moved in with my boyfriend at the time who is absolutely not a minimalist. He is what I would call a maximalist. He likes stuff, he likes clothes, he likes gadgets, electronics, just art and stuff around the house. And, you know, normal, I would say he's a little bit heavier than the normal American consumer, but maybe middle of the road. I don't know. I'm definitely not, um, I'm definitely on the other end of the spectrum, but we, you know, you move in with someone and you, combined lives and so we just had a lot of shit and like you know drawers of electronics and like just endless piles of whatever and that absolutely stressed me out and it was sort of beginning to suffocate me without even realizing it and I but you just you never question these things because we're kind of just you know you look at what your peers are doing you look at what's on television you look at what's on commercials and uh, what your friends have. And there's just sort of this push to be like, well, this is what an American home looks like. This is what it looks like to be successful. This is what it looks like to be an adult. You need this TV and this computer and this many clothes. And especially with clothes, I remember when I did move from Canada to the States, we moved to Scottsdale and not that fashion's not a thing in Canada in the nineties, like it was, but you know, half the time we're in snowsuits, like it was cold. <laughs> Um, but in, you know, Scottsdale, Arizona at a very wealthy high school, it was very different. I remember when we moved, I had just like five outfits and I was so stoked. I'm like, yeah, I've got one for each day of the week. That's all I need. And then I remember some of the, like the mean girls kind of made fun of me like, oh, you're wearing that again. And I remember this one girl, Robin Greenberg, she, she told me, she's like, oh yeah, I'd never have worn the same outfits twice ever in her high school career. And I was like a sophomore at this point. And I, it planted this seed, you know, when you're young and insecure, like, and you want to be liked. And it's so it planted this seed of my worth is in how, what my fashion is. And that caught up to me in my twenties when I was all my insecurities, you know, those childhood things you don't, haven't dealt with yet started coming out and like, I need this new pretty dress to be worthy, or I need this new pair of heels to be liked or whatever. Or I need this new decoration in my house to be its certified adult. And it really, you know, fast forward into my later 20s, it was really starting to catch up with me. I mean, there were other things going on in my life too, but it was a really suffocating feeling of like, I don't want all this stuff. And it felt like a trap. And I know some people, I've been talking with people in the comments, we get into these situations where like, how the hell do we get out? And it seems impossible. And it seems like, well, that's just how it is. But we're a summation of our choices and I, particularly with consuming things and, and then subsequently choosing to let go of them, you can choose a different life if it serves you and you can choose to augment your behaviors in a way that will better serve your life. So fast forward a couple years, I, you know, I would start to declutter, but then when you're living with someone who's, you know, that's another challenge has a different value system on that. Like you can sometimes not progress as much as you want. Um, but fast forward, that relationship did end up ending for a multitude of reasons, but it was the right thing to happen. And that sort of really kicked me off on my decluttering journey. We'd been living together for seven years. And so I was moving out to an apartment and that was like a fresh start and not saying you need to have a breakup to start your decluttering journey. Um, but for me, it's just sort of lit the fire under my butt of like, okay, this is my place. I was now uh, 30 years old at that point versus 23 when we got together. So you know who you are a little bit more as you get older. And I, you know, a lot of the things in the apartment were his, like his TV, his couch, his, you know, a lot of his art. So 
my I moved into my apartment and uh, at first I was like, oh, I'm going to have to buy this, this and this. And then when I got in there and like just unpacked my few things, I was like, oh my God, I can breathe. This feels so much better. And I didn't have a couch. I just had this little leopard chair. And at first I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to have to get a couch. I'm going to have to get a kitchen table, but I didn't have a lot of money. And then I was surviving the first few weeks without them. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. This is so much better. I don't want that stuff. And I have just a few little, you know, I've got my little chair. I've got a little meditation cushion. I've got just a few dishes. I, I, I swiped a few of his, um, but it was, that's what started my Noah's Ark. I had two plates, two bowls, two forks, two spoons, two knives and, I, knives. and I was like, this is amazing. I don't want any more stuff than this. And then, from now that I could sort of see the layer, then I went to the next big project of my closet. Um, I still have a walk-in closet and I was still a performing artist. So I was still in sort of that like ostentatious, um, lavish circle, if you will. But I was looking around and I noticed that in my closet, there was like a handful of my favorite things that I always wore. And then there was stuff that was just sitting there and I just started going through and like I had, I was a teacher at the time. So I when was teaching like 13 year olds. So I gave away some things to them that they were super excited to have. I did a lot of goodwill. Um, a lot of it was just junk. I had to unfortunately trash or I did Salvation Army. Um, I didn't, this was about 10 ish years ago. So online platforms for selling were not as big. I, they probably were around back then, but I'm not online savvy. Um, so I just donated everything. And each time I got rid of a bag, it was like someone like gave me a breath like of life and, or like this giant weight was taken off. And it was interesting. I would go through a layer and think, okay, there's absolutely no way I can get rid of more things than this. And then I did, like I would remove stuff and then I'm like, oh wait, actually that thing sucks or I don't wear that or I don't use that at all. And it just like started cascading. And there wasn't one thing I got rid of that I was like, oh shit, I really shouldn't have done that. It was everything that I let go of. I've started feeling more and more centered into the core of who I am and just so much more free and light. But I did still have a fair amount of things because I was coming from, you know, a lifestyle of a lot of things. And it over the next, I would say really eight-ish years, it just kept sort of falling away because I move a lot. I'm a gypsy, I'm a nomad, I like to experience new places. After Vegas, I moved to LA and I still needed a moving truck um, because I still had things and a mattress and blah, blah, blah. But, um, then when I moved there, it's like, you realize, man, just when you, when you move, you really have to face how much you actually own and how much stuff you actually have. So why moving is really, really stressful for a lot of people because you have to come face to face with everything you've accumulated. And these, um, there's a great documentary called, I think it's just called minimalism. And they, the two guys that made it, they have a YouTube channel called the minimalists and they, uh, one of the quotes they have is the, you know, the things you own start to own you. And I think that's very true for a lot of people. And they, without even realizing it, feel overwhelmed by everything that's in their house. And, you know, certainly if you have to experience a move, then you, you come face to face with that. And you, you know, every time I moved, I moved a couple more times in LA. And even though I had probably less stuff at this point than the average bear, it was still a lot of stuff. It's still a lot of work and just putting stuff in bags and bags and bags and starting to question like, why do I have all this? And it was about that time, you know, maybe a couple years into LA where I watched that documentary called Minimalism and I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix, I believe. It's beautifully done. Um, and just started like binge watching videos on minimalism on YouTube and my something in my soul was like, yes, yes, this is what you need. And the, it started cascading again. And then I got two layers of things I didn't think I would even have seen before, which was another one was a big one was artwork. I, you know, I love color. I used to be a painter. I am a performing artist. I appreciate aesthetic. You know, lots of people love art and there's nothing wrong with art. Art is a wonderful thing. But I just came to this point of like seeing, there was all this like visual clutter and stimulus on my walls. And this was at a point where I was, 
working two jobs and living in Hollywood and very, very stressed out and realizing how much, you know, my home needed to be a container to relax and to zen out. And if there was all this like clutter and stimulus on the wall, it was a distraction. And, and then I, I remember even thinking this, I had just gone down to a trip to the ocean, um, to Laguna Beach and just was like so happy to be at the ocean. And then I came home and was like looking at this picture of an ocean that I had on my wall. And like, just something clicked. I'm like, we have all these like beautiful pictures of nature often on our walls when like we could go outside and be in nature, which I, I would rather go be in nature. Like there's incredible artists out there, but nothing I think comes close to what the creator, whatever your belief is, um, whatever, you know, if you go look in nature, nothing man has created comes close to it. And I don't want to just look at pictures of it. I want to go be in it. So that created a whole nother layer was letting go of artwork. And then I tackled sentimental items as sentimental, wow, <laughs> items as well. Um, I had this big suitcase of like old synchronized swimming costumes and um, medals and trophies. And it was some this heavy, heavy suitcase I just lugged around all the time, all moving, it sat in my closet. I never pulled that stuff out. Like I hadn't pr competed in years. I'm like, why do I have this? So I donated all that, let it go. I had big file boxes of all of my college papers and like exams and homework stuff. And like, I'm not going to look at my accounting papers anymore or my philosophy paper I wrote or my homework from calculus for business. Like get real. Like that stuff had just been sitting in heavy file boxes for years and years and years and lugged around. So I recycled all that and that felt amazing. And, and then I had photo albums too that were, you know, it's nice to look at photos, but they're, they're heavy and lugged around. So I digitized all of that. And now all of my photos live in Dropbox in the cloud. I have no physical photos anywhere. And it just sort of kept going. And then what really pushed it over the edge, I would say to qualify me as an extreme or ultra minimalism was, um, this is kind of funny, but I don't know where it came into my awareness or why, but the, it must have been in a conversation or something, but Last of the Mohicans, it's a movie by Michael Mann directed it. It's got um, uh, Madeline Stowe and Daniel Day-Lewis. It's like epic historical film from 1992, maybe. It like just bounced into my awareness and I was like, I need to watch this film. And so I watched it and bawled my eyes out and was completely blown away from it even though it's like you know it's an older film and I was watching it on my iPhone but it just something resonated and connected very deeply for me and it's actually my favorite movie of all time but it like push it hit this switch in me really really hard of not just oh this is a beautiful amazing movie it hit this switch of like all of a sudden this bird's eye view of my life and Western life in general. I was living in Hollywood. I was living this like glam life of like high heels and performance and glitter and teased hair and tons of makeup and, you know, the, the social media scene of like just fake, a lot of fakeness and, you know, the, the lavishness of Hollywood and just the consumerism and, you know, LA is kind of a huge symbol of that, I think. And it was just sort of this click of like, what am I doing and what are we doing on this planet? Like, this is out of control. I mean, we, it, it started with, you know, it's, you know, is that movie perfectly historically accurate? No, but it's a good representation of our history and coming over and, you know, Europeans taking over this continent and sort of just this push of capitalism, consumerism of just taking way more than we actually need. You know, we all need a little bit of stuff to survive. We all need some food. We all need some shelter. We all need some clothing. But the amount with which we consume today is out of control. And it's not just the super rich. It's easy to point your finger and say, oh, well, it's the Bill Gates of the world. Like, yes, but, or the Kim Kardashians, whatever but it's not all of them it's it's you know upper class it's middle class it's even people with struggling with income that are living outside of their means we it's this like train that we're on where you know with especially with like amazon prime and you you know punch something in you can have whatever you want and deliver to your door in like less than a day like that's insanity and 99 percent of the time it's not something you, that's life or death like we're 
the amount of things we're consuming, you know, you want to talk about the 1%, I think 99% of what we consume in Western developed nations is more than what, it's not what we need to survive. You know, I think most people could survive on 90-ish percent less of what they're consuming, myself included. I'm, I'm not perfect. No, no one's perfect, but I, so watching that movie, it just like, it rabbit hole and like pushed me into this like oh my god I need to change the way I live and I can't control how other people live their lives but I need to at least live in accordance with my own integrity and authenticity and um not continue down this road of just like oh this is how the modern life is like we can't afford to keep living like this There's, we don't have infinite resources like it's very abundantly clear you know, through climate change and through the Amazon burning and through, you know, freshwater shortages, through droughts, through food shortages, like we're, we need to slow down. And, you know, what fashion is a huge contributor to that, but it, it's, it's everything like they're outside of the bare bones basics. Like the, you know, you could go into any Target or Bed Bath & Beyond or, you know, Kohl's or whatever, like just like look in one of those stores at like how much product is there. It's unbelievable. And again, we all need a few things, but like the amount of things in like the Walmart to me, next to me could probably like provide for the whole city. And that's just one damn Walmart. Like there is just so much stuff. And we collectively, you know, we can sit around and wait for the government to making some new policies and whatever, but I believe you vote with your dollar and you vote with your choices and ultimately any change comes down to personal responsibility. You can point the finger and say it's so-and-so's fault or you can start changing your actions to align with a better future or hoped for future. And so that's kind of what that movie like pushed me into. And I, from then that I, started morphing into this more earthy version of myself. I was looking at this closet of like stiletto high heels and sparkly short dresses. And again, if you wear those things, there's nothing wrong with that, but it just, for me, it all of a sudden was like, this is not who I am. This is not the deepest, most authentic version of myself. This was a time period, but it doesn't resonate at all. So I let all of that go. I let all of my makeup go and just sort of morphed into this version of myself now that I would say I'm an essentialist. Like, does this mean like I live in a cave with a, a fur and a rock and that's it? No, like I have some things, but it's for me, like minimalism is so much more than just an aesthetic or a tiny wardrobe. It's a lifestyle really of, I really want to try and take only exactly what I need because there it we have such finite resources and we have humans you know it's not to say oh humans are the disease and the virus like no but we've made really really bad choices um but we also have the consciousness to where we can make better and different choices and live how other animals live in nature which is just taking what you need to survive and being content with that and I found actually the less, you know, this is not a lifestyle of deprivation. This is the more I've let go of the more peace and happiness I've felt. And, you know, I, you know, yesterday I went to an art exhibit uh, that was showing like Monet and Van Gogh and that was wonderful. But I also just went on a walk today at the beach, which was free and connected with nature. And there, to me, there's nothing more gratifying than being in nature and connecting with the beauty of this planet. You know, I think that transcends, I support any spiritual beliefs that anyone has, you know, you, we all have our own truths, but no one can deny nature is here. And I, I hope no one can deny how beautiful nature is and how precious it is. And if we could just Put down the iPhone for a second, put down the gaming console for a second, put down your Reddit article for a second, put down your Amazon Prime for a second, put down your, you know, magazine article about who Kim Kardashian is dating or not dating for a second, put down that whatever the hell show is popular on TV for a second, put down your damn TV remote for a second and look outside and like, oh my God, there is so much beauty everywhere. And we've become so disconnected from that, that w that's why we think we need all these things because there's this void inside 
where we, we feel separate. Um, and so we're trying to feel better about ourselves by having a new dress, by having a bigger house, by having a new car, by having that new fancy gadget, by having that new, oh, my current rug's not good enough, so I need a new rug. And like, it's just more and more and more and more when you could just, you could go on a hike and like listen to the birds and, or look at a, a, a creek or just be and realize that that's enough you know and i so that's kind of where i'm at now and i am i perfect do i never make a mistake with my purchases no that happens sometimes but you know often if it does i'll return it and i actually get like a secret high from returning it's like you know some people get a high from shopping i actually get a high from returning i'm like ah oh, great I, I screwed up but now i undid my screw up so it's exciting <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't expect everyone's minimalism to look like mine. You know, I, I've got some positive feedback on my minimalist home tour, but then I had some people said like, wow, that looks depressing as hell. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, you know, to each their own on that. But I invite you to think perhaps a little bit differently about your purchases and question, you know, you can't undo what you did in the past, um, but it, I mean, you can let things go, especially if you're things that can be recycled or donated to someone who might use them more. But we can start making better choices now. And rather than wait for, again, the government or someone else to make some sort of policy and fix the world for you, like we can start fixing it ourselves now and by making better choices. And when you go to purchase whatever, ask yourself, do I truly need this? Is this truly adding like really great value to my life? Is this going to help me be my most authentic version of myself? Is this gonna help me serve the world in some way? Or is this just a distraction? You know, I, part of what I do as a minimalist with, you know, it's tapering down the uh, consumption of goods, but it's also, just tapering down consumption in general. That's why I don't have a TV. It's why I don't have any social media except YouTube. That's why I really try to stay off the internet in general, unless it's for, you know, function. To me, the internet is a, a tool, not a source of entertainment. That's why I, you know, just anything in life that's going to take me out of the present moment or, or disconnect me from the things that truly matter, like nature and connecting with friends and being of service, I I want to to minimize those distractions and addictions. So it's um, you know that's why minimalism for me it's not just an aesthetic. It's a it's a whole lifestyle, and I you know do I think minimalism could save the world? Yeah, kind of. And um, People get a little triggered because people like their things. And you know, I'm not saying everyone needs to go burn everything they own. Like I'm all about personal freedom. But I think if everyone took a deeper look at their consuming habits, they could see areas where, you know what? Actually, there's probably a lot of this that I really don't need. And I would really feel liberated without and would, it would create space for things that are truly of value in my life. Okay. That's my rant for today. That is the story of how I became an ultra minimalist. Um, do you want to be an ultra minimalist? Ask me some questions or do you want to consume maybe just a little bit less? Um, I am here to help. I would love to hear your journeys with this. And if you think there's, there's room where you could create more space in your life. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.